Welcome to our daily service. Whether you watch every day or only occasionally, thank you for joining us today. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. As we begin, let's pray together this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord God Almighty, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that by your brightness we may know you to be the true God and eternal light, living and reigning for ever and ever. Amen. On Saturday we put up our Christmas tree. My daughter and I bought it in the morning. We managed to get it into the car and then through the front door and into the living room and into its pot. And we spent the afternoon decorating it, put the decorations here and there, making it look beautiful and putting the angel on the top. And then we turned out the main light in our living room and stood there in the darkness. And then we turned on the Christmas tree lights and they lit up the whole room. We want light at Christmas, whether it's on our trees or in our windows or in our streets. We want to dispel the darkness not just physically, but the darkness of gloom and despair and worry. There's been so much of that this year. And there was plenty of it in Isaiah's time too. This week we're looking at Isaiah chapter 9. But back in chapter 8 and verse 22, Isaiah God, describes God's people like this. They will see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will be thrust into outer darkness. Why? Because the nation was engulfed in a huge political crisis. King Ahaz had refused to trust God, and as a result the Assyrians had invaded the land. All that lay ahead was death and despair and darkness. There was no bright future. And yet into these dark days, Isaiah promises that a new day will dawn. Let's read together Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah says a great light will shine. The land will be flooded with light. Yes, the current darkness is true and real, but it's not the whole truth and reality. The future is bright. God's people will see everything in a new light. And although Isaiah was writing these words centuries ago, he was writing them for us. Because what does God promise us if it isn't a bright future? And a future that's begun, that we're a part of already, the light has dawned. Jesus, the light of the world, has come. And through the good news of the gospel, we see God's light. The light of God's salvation is shining upon us. And by it, we see everything in a new light. So what about you? What do you need to see differently now that the lights are on? Maybe as you look ahead to next year, all you can see is economic uncertainty. It's easy to walk in darkness, to be full of fear and worry and frustration. Will I be able to make ends meet? What might happen to my pension? The darkness is real. Our fears are understandable. But the light has dawned. As God's people, we see everything in a new light. Our ultimate confidence is not in politicians or markets or in our credit cards. Our bank balance does not determine who we really are. Our trust is in God. Being in Christ shapes how we see ourselves and others. Maybe you're feeling lonely, struggling for purpose. Your Christmas plans have changed dramatically. You see friends and family less often. You're tired of Zoom. The darkness is real. 
our fears are understandable. But the light has dawned. As God's people, we see everything in a new light. Maybe God is using this time to draw you closer to him or to teach you to pray to him and call out to him. Maybe this is an opportunity to receive the help you need or to reach out to one or two people and to bring hope to them. C.S. Lewis, the Christian writer, wrote these words. I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. God's gift to us is his salvation, his gospel light shining into our lives. So what do you need to see differently now that the lights are on? We're going to thank God for his light and for all his other blessings to us. So let's join in this prayer together. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely given to us, for light and life, for health and safety, for power to work, leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of the future in your kingdom of light. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the media. Merciful God, we pray for the media in our country and throughout the world. Thank you for the technology that enables us to be connected with so many people and places. Please direct those who speak where many listen, those who write what many read, those who influence what many see, that they may do their part in promoting truth, peace and justice. Strengthen them to speak out against all that is evil and to celebrate the good, working with honesty, integrity and wisdom for the good order of society. And loving Lord, we pray for ourselves as consumers of media Help us find the most helpful information to equip us to be good neighbours. Help us to be discerning in what we read and see and to engage critically. Help us to maintain appropriate boundaries and to help others who are struggling to do so. Please keep us from anxiety and panic. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our song for today celebrates not only the one who made the light, but who entered into our dark world. It may be a new song to some of us, so please listen to the words or sing along. Hold 
Thank you for joining us today. As we go, let's pray our opening prayer again. O Lord God Almighty, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that by your brightness we may know you to be the true God and eternal light, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>